All right. So today's guest is the one and only Mike DeBoer. <laughs> <laughs> Mike DeBoer has been the head coach of Lakeside since uh, 1994, and he's been at Lakeside since 1988. Uh, under his guidance, Lakeside has produced, I have it on his website, it said four Olympic team members, but that yeah. could be more. Okay. Four. No, I wish more, but. Yeah. Uh, named the Kentucky Swimming Senior Coach of the Year 15 times, just 15, and twice named ASCA Age Group Coach of the Year. He's placed swimmers on 17 different USA national team members and coach swimmers attending the Olympics, National Junior Team, Pan American Champs, Pan Pacific Champs, European Champs, South America Champs, Junior Pan Packs, Junior World Championships, Short Course Worlds, and Long Course World Championships. So <laughs> hard to believe, huh, Mike? Yeah, it uh, is. <laughs> so. Um, so, you know, before we hit the record button and we were talking, you've been – at Lakeside uh, since 1988 and head coach in 1994. If I was to go back and talk to the young man in 1988 and said, you're still going to be coaching here uh, in 2021, what would you have said? I would say absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I was really, I was coaching and coaching country club and had some good success and part-time at a club after school and really didn't have any inclination what I wanted to do. Um, and the current age group coach at Robert Winningham so, that was here was leaving and he thought he knew the new head coach coming on, Mark Williams. And Mark reached out to me about a month later and said, I was recommended Would I want to coach full time. And I felt like it was an easy way to have a job, not go in the family business and um, not be too far away from Lexington home and my friends. And then it just ended up kind of slowly progressing. And there's been things along the way to reconsider and think. And um, probably went with a buddy that owns an um, orthopedic sales company, went on some calls with him and sat in surgeries. And he's telling the doctor what to do. And I was like, can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> um, for me. And it just kind of ends up. And then, you know, as anything, you get some success and, start rolling and then you, you know, you kind of enjoy being with the kids and that makes it hard to change paths. And if you're good at it and it kind of happens and I enjoy it, I enjoy the coaching part and being on deck and do all that. So just kind of happens. Yeah. So, um, you say when you got hired in 1994, you know, I'm sure you interviewed for the job, but then you're coaching and then like other coaches are walking <laughs> in <laughs> And you're seeing them. It had to be awkward. So how do you go from being that head age group coach to being head coach? And and what was that experience like for you? Um, it was probably a little bit unique in that when I came in, the team was was fairly small and not not as not on top of it. I think the the group of like Leanne Fetter, Dorsey Tierney, um, Judy Welty and Eileen Sampy, some some really good kids had had just finished and I don't know that much was done below that. Um, so as I came in as a coach, I, I kind of had those kids, we had success. And then Martin Wilby was with us for a couple of years as senior coach. And when he left to go down to bowls, um, I moved up and did the senior kids. So that was a good transition and gave me something new and different probably about halfway through that six year period. Um, and a lot of those kids moved with me. And then it was about the same time when I was interviewing that they were moving up to the national team or our top group. So it kind of led that I, I was lucky enough to have the same group of kids almost the whole time and they were successful. So it kind of bolstered my credibility. And I approached it that I didn't think I was the best head coach, but I was the best head coach for this team at the time. And that I knew the team the best. We had been successful. I'd had kids score at juniors from the senior group. Um, so it just kind of led into it a little bit. Um, and I guess the, the biggest thing that um, I remember from that interview was probably an hour, hour and a half. And with people I knew and had been with and finished, and they asked if I had any questions. And I kind of asked, I said, well, what are you looking for in a coach? And there was silence in the room. 
um, cause I don't think they had really thought about it. And the final answer, it was, was the only answer was, well, someone like, just like you. And I said, thank you. And <laughs> got up and walked out. Mike drop. And we'll see you later. Got the call that night. So, you know, that would be my advice to anybody else that if you're the best person for that job, you may not be, you know, I, I wouldn't have claimed that I would have been the best coach to go to Carmel or go to anywhere else at that time. But for here I was, and, you know, for those people that are hiring head coaches, you know, I think don't, don't ever forget to look within and developing what you want versus trying to go out there and find somebody. Yeah, that's a great point. And Mike, you certainly have had to have had opportunities to take other maybe club jobs or college jobs along the way. Um, and what, what may ultimately has helped you stay at Lakeside this whole time? <laughs> Probably being chicken to make, make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I honestly, I think a couple of things. Um, one big one, um, and it was when Tom Vicious was still at Carmel that I don't know what is what brought it up, or but he's just mentioned the grass is never greener anywhere else and just kind of fertilize your own. Um, and I've been lucky enough that I think at each point that maybe I've thought about something different, we were having pretty good success. So it, so it made it that much harder to leave um, and looking at that. And then always looking at it that if a majority of the time if something's open, then there had to be a reason people left. Right. And, you know, that's always a, a little bit scary. And then continuing to think that that I'm the best one for this job, um, and may not be for every job. Um, and I, and I went out and looked and, and, you know, had some enticing offers and so far it's been the right decision every time, um, that whoever they did hire was gone within a few years and had a falling out. Um, so, so far it's been great. Um, maybe I've missed some opportunities as well, but I think the, the club here has been great to me. Um, never had to go ask for a raise or anything else. It's always been, been supported. And, um, you know, we, we certainly had our ups and downs, but we're a parent run or parent owned team, I guess we're kind of parent board, but we coach run and everything kind of goes through the office and through myself, um, which I think is how it should work. And it can work that people that are having issues with that, um, they're probably not doing enough as coaches and taken taken over that I think the problems they run into is when they give duties or tasks to other people and they start taking ownership and then they don't do it the way you want to do it. Well, Mike, I think that's great advice for all the coaches out there. And I know, um, you know, I'm certainly a few years behind you as head coach at Carmel, but your program you sure swimming, swimming when I coached. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly swam. I remember swimming. I don't know. I definitely swam in the, when I was in college, but I just feel like when I become head coach, you helped guide me through being head coach at Carmel because you guys were such a, I think, a force to be reckoned with and kind of like a model program. And you've certainly led the way and just success all the way around. So now, now we've talked about your success. I looked up an article and this was from <laughs> 2016. I know. You had five things that you attributed to the success of uh, Lakeside at the time, and you had retention, tradition, expectations, consistency, and atmosphere. Right. Um, can you talk a little bit about each of those and what that means to you at Lakeside? Sure. You'll name them off again as we go. <laughs> yeah, let's talk. So how do, what do you do to keep uh, the kids in the water, the retention? Um, I mean, I, I think the retention is is a huge part of it, and I think we've – We've probably been the last few years, some some more of the older kids. We went through a string of maybe 10 years looking at that club portal type thing where our retention of 13 overs was like over 100%. And so I think that's huge. Um, if we lose kids, it's most of the time it's after their first year. It's either they it wasn't what they wanted um, as a sport or it wasn't what, what they wanted as a team. Um, after that, it's it's staying, keeping them involved and keeping them consistent. I think being patient, 
um, and allowing them to do other things that, you know, it's, it's kind of always been mine, even like when I was recruiting as the agent coach at the summer club meets, I didn't really go talk to the parents. It was kind of be the Pied Piper of the kids and the kids I coached would have friends and that I, I feel like if you convince the, the child or the swimmer that they want to do it, then they'll bug the parent enough to get them to do it. And it'd be the same thing. I think for going to practice that you have to convince them, not, not the parent that I think parents will do whatever their kids want and support that. So I think the, the more you can convince them to buy in the, the more apt they are to show up that, you know, mom and dad may want to say, Oh, won't you skip a day or do that? But it's it's up to that swimmer. If that swimmer doesn't want to miss, then they're going to take them. And no matter how far away it is or, or, or what it is. Um, and I think being being flexible and, and it might be I always kind of look at us. I guess I try not to come up with too many rules. Um, just kind of keep it simple. Um, the more rules you have, the more you have to make up other rules to enforce them. Yep. And not super structured or super um, regimented um, within that. And that allows kids to grow and do it. There's headaches with that, that some people can't handle. Um, I guess it's, it kind of goes with personality that I have the ability to kind of, I don't really ignore it, but I, I can not overreact a majority of the time. I do get upset, um, but not overreact when things aren't going exactly the way you want them or with a, with a swimmer um, and doing that. I think things you learn along the way help retention that, you know, I'm very sarcastic with the kids and, um, you know, I think you have to watch that, especially with the boys. Um, boys don't like their manhood to be challenged um, and how you handle that. That took a long time to, for me to be successful with the guys side that we had some good guys, but always um, better on the girls' side for a long time. And I, I couldn't tolerate the getting in late or the standing on deck, looking at their muscles or being cool or whatever they do um, really bothered me. Um, and I've kind of grown to allow that to, to move on and not panic at that and, and allow the kids to develop. So I think you just kind of, you know, the, the most you can do to keep them involved, keep them in. Um, we had a good girl that was a gymnast and she kind of let me know the gym coach was giving her a hard time about coming in with wet hair, not coming to, to gym all the time. And I kind of let, made sure I never said a word negative about gymnastics yeah. and she ended up choosing swimming. She may have been an outstanding gymnast. I don't know but I don't ever want to be the coach to keep someone from what they, what maybe they should do, even if they're a good swimmer, um, that if they should be, if they're meant to do something else, let them decide and, and be, try to be as patient as we can with that. Okay. I love it. Um, number, the second one was tradition and you certainly have a tradition of excellence there at Lakeside. So how, how do you, I would say maybe, keep the tradition going. Are there things that you're doing? <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, like, do you think, I mean, obviously I think the tradition also, Mike, is your, the outdoor pool, right? The lakeside. Sure. Sure. You know, that is just a, it's a gem, a hidden gem that only, I, you know, I think teams in the Midwest know about maybe some teams in Texas I've seen there, but like, it is a, it is such a unique and, and cool place. Well, I mean, I, I think facility certainly makes a huge, huge difference. And uh, I think it, I, I, I don't know that I'd still be here if we didn't go outside. Um, yeah. After you're there. Um, I just love, I like the hot weather, the sun. So, well, you're um, below the river, so you're protected from all that cold weather in Indiana. Well, it does protect us from the cold. <laughs> um, but, I think that the facility lends itself. It's, it's just a, a whole another training environment. And even though it's for two months, I, I think it makes all the difference in the world um, when those kids can get out there. And I think it just feeds within that. And then the amount of time we get there. And we were just in Sports Illustrated. So Pat Forty, yeah. great, great, great article. article. Yeah. Coolest pool. Um, but with that tradition, I think it's, it's probably the respect and knowing like Denny Persley, knowing Bill Peak, 
knowing Monty, knowing Scott Miller, these guys that preceded me during, you know, some will, some will still say the heyday, but, you know, I, I feel like we've been fairly consistently strong in the 2000s. Um, and, you know, there's, there's always some ups and downs with everything. But it's it's maintaining that, and then I think lucky enough that a Rachel Comazar moves to Louisville and wants to train, and then we hit it off, and it and it works out perfectly, and that that leads those other kids to follow her path and realize what it is that when a Caroline Burkle or her, her her whole class is going to nationals and they have a a, a player leading them in makes a big difference um, when you're doing that. And then, you know, therefore Caroline leads the next group and Clark and those guys lead the next. And it just kind of feeds upon itself. And then I guess my respect and making sure that the kids realize um, how important the tradition is and how import, important that is to, to the team and the program. And I think with the gold medal stuff comes up and that, you know, that's important to us. Um, you know, we, uh, I think we were silver one year and I, I not wasn't embarrassed, but we did not put that banner up. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I think it, all those things lead together. And then I think me being here um, and doing that. And then I think the good, good connection with the past. And I guess the respect of those coaches that, that came before me. Yep. So I would I agree 100%. I think there's just so much power in watching people on your club or from your area go do something special. If they can do it, so can you. Right. There's just real power there. Which maybe leads to the third point, you have expectations. Mine are, mine are pretty high. <laughs> yeah, high standards um, for you, right? And not to the point of, of being upset with, with, a, with a swimmer or anything else, but it is – relayed over that, um, you know, probably the, the negative of it, I'm probably not as excited as I should be for some of the people's first, whether it be first time they broke two minutes, first time they break 150, things that that led. And I, and I try to remember that all the time, that, you know, what, what was my reaction the first time, I don't know, that Rachel made a national team in 2001 or 2000. What was my react? You know, is it the same for these kids? Um, and it probably is not that you kind of become, I don't want to say stale or, but oblivious to, you know, that this is not the fast person I've had. So it's not very good. And, you know, what's your reaction the first time a girl goes under 450 when we've had four or five girls go under 440? And, so it's, I think that would be important to try to remember, important for me to try to remember to be, to be excited. But at the same note, it's kind of with the swims and I tell kids all the time, whether it be practice or me, I would probably call you and say, man, this kid is doing something in workout before I would tell them how good it was. Yeah. And just kind of keeping that and, and getting them to hope for more. And I think it increased their satisfaction level. And then I don't think anyone's doing anything perfect. There's not that perfect swim or performance in any sport out there. Um, it can be called bad or close to it, but it's still, there's still something they could do better. And I think always leaving that, I, I have had kids, um, I'm actually coaching the kids of a swimmer that I had that was really good. And I always remember at a, I think it was juniors or nationals that, and maybe, maybe it was juniors and he made nationals and won the event. And I think he's, I was talking to him. He goes, just tell me I did a good job. That's all I want. Just tell me. Um, and the same, there's some kids that, you know, man, I got a handshake from that. Um, we even have a little girl that's, that's pretty good now that a year or two ago when she was in my age group group, she would I found out she was always asking, do you think Mike was, you think Mike thought I did well? Do you think, you know, what would he do? Would he, would he smile? Would he give me? Yeah. So I think some of those little things, it's not acting like it's nothing, but you know, not overreacting. And I try to tell the parents the same thing that, 
you know, quit using amazing or unbelievable or, yeah. you know, because how often do those kids, you know, the very next meet, they're scared to death to try to repeat that. But I, I don't, I don't want to swim the 4am again. Cause I don't think I can do a best time again. That what I did last time was amazing. Yeah. And, you know, just trying to get over that. So I think that just increases the expectations. And um, then too, that we've had success. So, and the kids know that. So they realize the expectation and that, you know, that they're not the fastest that we've had so far. Yeah. It's always a balance, right? As a coach getting excited at the same time, like, Hey, I know there's a lot more in there, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um, well, Consistency is number four. Obviously, you <laughs> are the consistent part of this formula. Right. But um, do you think, you know, when I always talk to you, you, you seem to have a pretty consistent training plan. You have a flow for the season. You know where you should be. You're obviously tinkering, but I think you have a consistent maybe attitude or uh, philosophy to coaching as well. I don't know. Maybe you want to elaborate on that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I have I have past swimmers that are probably telling me we're not going nearly as hard as we as we used to. Um, it used to snow in Louisville too, right? You had to yeah, swim yeah. outside. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I certainly try to adapt and try to you know improve. It, it's hard to break out of what what you've done and, and been doing successfully and try to add to that. And that, that probably becomes the hardest thing. And then two to kind of reinvent or do that, but. I think simply, you know, hard work, hard work, and it doesn't necessarily mean volume. I know um, I'll bring names back. Like Steve Condor was a good buddy of mine and taught me a lot. And um, that they, I was always criticized for not doing enough volume and with the older kids, but we were still doing well. And now I'm probably considered we're doing too much. Like we're doing more than everyone. Um, and, and we're not unbelievably, but we've, we've kind of always – I like going fast. And so we, if anything, we probably go fast too often. Um, but I think the, the kids are excited about it. I, I get excited about it. It's fun to do that. Um, and I think challenging um, through there. Um, I don't come up with any time I've tried to come up with a super structured plan, or anything else. I feel like I, I get a little bit more upset when we're not on it. So I've stayed with more. I know at what point in the season where we want to do this and where we might start adding this in or that in and, and adjusting through there. And, and that can always kind of, kind of change. Um, and just trying to find ways to um, stimulate them. And I, I think, you know, in terms of overall training, it's, we are training to, to race. And I think trying to put them in, I try to find ways to put them in situations that, how would they feel in the race and what would they do then and right or wrong um you know that's that's kind of how i do the set so maybe a lot of training might be a little bit more mixed than what some other people do instead of maybe one energy system you know totally and, and i've tried to back off that i used to have a group that they always um called it sabotage <laughs> and that we might have two or three big or really hard sets and i'm kind of like that's warm up and then that's kind of the preset and they're like no that's sabotage <laughs> and and um a great word for it i think that i've backed off that a little bit and tried to get a little bit more low end and efficient type of stuff and um I, I mean i think kicking is unbelievably important but i probably still don't do enough that it's it's um frustrating to spend that much time on on the kicking and even if they're fairly fast kickers you're still you know doing a lot more of that um so if we, i mean we, we we mix it up um and stay through there but I, I think it stayed fairly consistent i think um for the most part our staff um type personalities have been consistent um and we've been lucky enough to to get some great ones in and do that. I think, you know, we've probably had great success. If I've had past swimmers come and coach um, and going through there. And then I still think the consistency of me always working with a younger group 
And that's, that's kind of been a, a broad spectrum. And I know there's a lot of people that criticize or say they can't do it or do it, but I think that's unique to us. I think more people are taking that lead or, or, or seeing the value in it. Um, I think for us as club coaches that it's important. Um, the longer you know the kids and the better you know them, I think it's great. Um, it's, if you're lucky enough to do those 11, 12s, then I think that's key or nine and tens. Um, I've done the eight and unders and different, but I think if I have the, the best kids when they're younger and they're very successful, then that's what they remember when they come into the top group. And if you ask your kids now, if you don't coach them, you know, who their, who their best coach was, I'm sure it's going to be whoever coached them 11, 12 when they were dropping 10 seconds. Right. Um, so you're kind of playing that manipulation game of I'll just be in that spot. And then they identify what you're doing with success. So, and, and, and I think we're consistent as a, as a club that it, um, it just kind of has, has rolled along. And since I've been here, that, that makes it that much easier to be consistent. Yeah. And the, I would, you know, obviously the parents have a pretty good idea of who you are and what you're about as well. Right. I mean, they, right. you know, so they know who Mike is. If they don't know him now, it's probably a too late. late. <laughs> well, and you pass through and I think, you, you know, the parents, you know, and working for a board, we've had some ups and downs. We always, you know, every once in a while you get a crazy board member or you get, and, and I'm sure that we have as many crazy parents as anybody else, but I think they're in the minority. And if you keep them that way, I think that's hugely beneficial. And they have to ultimately realize that we as coaches are more invested in the program than they are, that they're only here yeah. for eight, nine, 10 years, maybe. If, if they're lucky and, the, and they, they value the club and else, but when they leave, they leave, you know, they'll be supportive, but they're not, they're not involved once they, once they take off. And we even have a, a Nick Graves, we just hired from Dynamo that um, he was talking about officials and, and even our meet officials are not ex parents or older that they're new and that, you know, that, that was one thing he noticed different with them that, that Georgia LSC was, you know, a lot of older officials and that, you know, kind of been there. So I think that even that change and that people move on and um, we get new ones in, but we are the most invested in the programs. Yeah. Well, and now you've got to be coaching former swimmers' children, right? Oh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> That's a great sign, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and lastly, number five, you had atmosphere. So what's the atmosphere like on a lakeside pool deck? I know I've been there, but from I, – I always feel like it's good. It's it's yeah. probably a lot like how I run the program, maybe a little bit of controlled chaos. Um, <laughs> I, I don't – you know, and maybe – and I'm sure there's days when they're miserable, but I, I don't feel like the kids are miserable coming in. Um, are there, you know, they're dreading what's going on. Um, and it might be hard. I don't think they like every set or everything we do. Um, I'm sure that there's sprinters that don't think we'd sprint enough and there's distance guys that don't think we do enough distance. Um, but I think the overall atmosphere is, 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 has been good and always is. Um, and especially if, if team dynamics are there, you know, we always ha have those bumps in the road or we'll have, a mixed group when kids move up, they don't mesh with the kids that are currently in a group. And we just kind of handle that. Um, try to keep with some fun traditions of different little sets or things on the holidays that I think bring them together, but also make it fun. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I think little things like Tuesday, we did 12, four hundreds. Um, and it wasn't unbelievably hard, but it was solid aerobic. And of course we did 12 400s again on Wednesday. So with, with smiley faces on the workout um, and that was certainly appreciated. And then even yesterday they expected 12 400s again and, and we did the workout and they kept asking, All right, is this really the practice? Are we really doing this? And I just kept rolling through. I didn't say a word. And, um, and I think being, you know, excited to be there that, 
you know, and that's, and I think getting to the kids that we wait all day to be on deck. And so when they come and they pick up the workout or they see the workout on the dry rate board and they, they moan or groan, it can really set us off as a coach pretty quickly because you invest at that time and you're excited to see what happens and they come in and go, God, I hate this. Um, that, that can really be, be a tough thing to face. Um, but, but letting them know that we're here for that. And I think to separating the swimmer and the person, you know, I think making sure that, you know, what you did may suck, but you don't suck. Um, kind of approach and even told a little kid or not a little kid she's 13 but she's in my little kids group that she said something about herself like she said I, oh i stink at that i can't do that or whatever and i said you know you know you would quit or kill me if i talked to you the way you talk to yourself right and how brutal they are and that you know each swimmer should they should be number one should be themselves and if they can't even be positive about themselves, you know, how can they be successful within that um, and trying to do it? And I, I think, you know, control of um, the groups without being over, you know, I've, I've gone, I've been through the whole, I mean, I, I can be loud and I yell and I get mad. Um, but I think overall trying to keep, you know, have that control and, and that comes with respect from the kids and then trying to instill that within that you know hopefully passing that responsibility on to them um you know is is important but the atmosphere we, we try to have music going we try to you know get it going i mean it's not all fun and games but trying to be that i've probably stopped like cheering for them on deck as much as i probably should or, or used to in terms of sets you know hopefully that comes back this season when we were we swam outside last year <laughs> in a little neighborhood pool and i was kind of tentative to start screaming and yelling a lot of times plus it was 25 30 degrees there's snow on the ground steam coming off the water um we're bundled up and the kids are running on deck in their suits that um i tried not to overreact and get too upset with them well i mean that just shows how dedicated you were as a coach to coach in the snow in Louisville too, right? You guys, brutal. you're not supposed to have that down there. No, we, we get it. <laughs> no, this is good. Um, so when you talk about, I know your big thing is, you, you mentioned it earlier, is racing. How often would you say in the middle of the season, you're quote, doing racing and what do those sets look like for you guys? I, I think they probably, they, they race almost every day. Sure. Um, we probably, I mean, if, if anything over the past, um, with those older kids, I probably have let them, like if, if we, you know, if I'm looking at a set as being threshold or EM2 or whatever you want to call it red and we're descending, I probably have not controlled that descent. So I think all too often the boys probably especially run into that, they're probably at threshold or red and on number two, and then they're hammering number three, trying to race and get after that um, and do that. In terms of sets, probably once once we go in November, it's probably three days a week of either it might be a dive lactate type of set and then maybe a true VO2 max where it's hundreds or 150s or 75s or something in there and then one one set will probably be pace and actually do pace work or, or you know try to target that um but i think a lot of the threshold or the endurance days turn into a little bit more racing and that's where i think if, if we overtrain or overtrain one segment of that that um that would probably be it that not controlling them on on the other end we did a um set the other day that was like nine one hundreds and they did three that were supposed to be i guess in one check hold the same time check your heart rate see what it is three that were supposed to be threshold check your heart rate make sure you're on there and then three that i wanted just like one to two seconds faster 
And that was purely to prove to them they could train faster at the same heart rate. And if you, why train at 107 if you can train at 105 and keep the heart rate the same? Then we did two 200s, the same format. And then we did a one 300 of each. Okay. During that, I made the intervals a little bit lighter. And there was one little girl that's been training well, and, and I could tell she was beat red. I mean, just, and she goes, well, I said, what was your heart rate? And she's like 30, 33 or so. 30. I'm like, well, it wasn't supposed to be. I said, you're supposed to like try to keep it and just go a little. I know, but, but somebody was ahead of me and I had to race. I was trying to catch them and I was racing them and I just had to hammer the last one. Um, so you like that, yeah. but you know, if, if you're trying to control that stuff um, and I, I think a lot, a little bit of it, I think the kids recover quicker than we give them credit for. Um, and I, you know, I think I try to be scientific, but it's probably more artsy. Um, and what can we do? And then to getting excited, you know, when they're going fast and trying to build that confidence if they're doing it. All right. Well, Mike, this has been some great stuff. I'm going to ask you some, uh, maybe lighter questions here. Okay. All right. So, um, if you could, do a social kick with anybody at any time in history, who would you do it with? <laughs> wow. Um, I don't know. Um, probably Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a little 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 guy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great answer. Um, what song would you least like oh. to pop up during workout? I'm not much of a music guy. Um, so I wouldn't even know. I would, I would have to hear it to know that I didn't like it. Probably any kind of rap. Any rap. Yep. Okay. Um, if, uh, would you rather have to write a kick set or a pull set? Would I rather, I'd rather pull. Pull. Okay. Would you rather you personally swim in water that's too warm or too cold? <laughs> Well, when I'm at the lake house, it's always perfect. <laughs> um, no, I would have to say probably cold. No, oh, okay. That's a that's a swimmer answer, right? <laughs> um, wh what uh, what's your favorite Gatorade color? Um, I like that the um, clear clear lime or whatever the the lighter colored lime. Not the cloudy, not the cloudy. I'm not, cloudy. Man, I'm not expecting that. I was thinking more like a, feel like a fierce blue guy or something. Oh, yeah, grape is really good. Too. Grape, yeah. Grape. Can't go wrong with grape. Um, as we wrap up, Mike, is there you know anything you want to tell everyone before you before we uh, end this? Any advice you have to the coaches and swimmers out there? Um, I don't know. I think some we're we're simply. You know, and I've had some parent meetings recently and, and something that kind of continues to reoccur and even talking to kids is, is just simply be your be your best every day and, and do a better job of making the most of that opportunity. I think, you know, I guess I and maybe we're maybe we're unique that I feel like I'm teaching the same stuff over and over and over and over. And you and you say the same thing. And I even sent a um, message to maybe the first week or two weeks of the season to the older kids on the group me that it's like, if you're tired of hearing the same thing, then start doing something different. Yeah. You know, that I, I wouldn't tell you to finish to the wall or be faster underwater. Or this is what, you know, this is how many kicks per second you need to be if you were doing it and, and trying to do, trying to get them to buy into doing something new that, they should want to hear. They don't want to hear the same thing every day from you. But for whatever reason, they do. And I, I don't know if we're, we're not teaching correctly or getting the message across or that's normal around the country. Um, I always feel like our kids are spoiled that we teach a lot with the younger kids, but I don't know if it's always um, comprehended or soaked in or absorbed through there. So I think that makes it a little bit frustrating or that maybe just normal kids that you know they can do it and then i think too i think be aware that we're teaching an individual sport in a group setting that, yeah. that that's probably a tough thing and that everything you say on deck applies to everybody and then you know that 
if you want it to be individual, you'll get to that swimmer. And it's not the other way around. I think a lot of the kids, I feel like younger to older that they all want, they think only when you say their name does it apply to them. If we, if we tell them we all need to streamline past 15 meters or whatever it is, well, you didn't tell me to do that. Right. So I, yeah. I didn't get that point across. All right, Mike. Hey, I appreciate your time. No, it's great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. Thanks.